usher and president of VCC, Dr. Jack Spraga. Thank you. <laughs> well, thank you, Denise, and I want to thank you for uh, helping to arrange this event, a very important event. Um, this, this event uh, complements a very important priority for the college, and that is uh, civility and uh, understanding and mutual tolerance. Uh, very upsetting times that we live in, as they're tumultuous times. Um, starting, uh, it didn't start, but uh, certainly Ferguson uh, in St. Louis and, uh, and the rest of uh, the unfortunate that we even see today in Baltimore, right? Uh, 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 intolerance and uh, misunderstanding uh, continue to plague uh, society. Uh, and not just America, but global society. We see Christians being uh, persecuted and assassinated in the, in the Middle East. And, uh, uh, and the unfortunate uh, piece of this is that uh, we're not having good conversations about what's going on. And, uh, and, and conversations among mixed groups, I say mixed groups in the sense that, you know, uh, what, what I see happening uh, unfortunately, is that group, uh, people f congregate in groups of like mind, and another group will form of a different like uh, mind, and they're all together in what they feel, and they mutually reinforce each other's misperceptions and uh, 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 mistakes. And uh, we need to have a more of an uh, integration of the ideas. Uh, that's what we're all about at the college, uh, these integration of ideas. So uh, one such misunderstanding, terrible misunderstanding, is uh, to transform, that we're going to learn about today, but to transform the wonderful, peaceful, uh, cooperative, uh, uh, com non-competitive uh, religions of, of, of Islam uh, have been tarnished with misinformation and mislabeling uh, and uh, as a result uh, those uh, the disasters continue because there's not this understanding so I'm very uh, much looking forward to today's talk uh, so to show you all and me how a this wonderful religion can be uh, distorted and uh, and uh, made uh, made into something evil uh, which is uh, absolutely opposite the case of, uh, for Islam. Uh, but I'm not going to make the speech. You're going to hear about it, okay? Uh, on, I don't have a 12.30 class, but I have a 12 o'clock meeting, so I'm apologizing ahead of time that I might have to leave early. But thank you all for coming. Uh, I hope that you will take the ideas that you hear and, uh, and disperse them uh, uh, among the conversations that you have. And uh, I'm going to return now uh, the podium to uh, uh, Professor Damasio so that we can move ahead with the, uh, with the event of the day. Thank you. Thank you, President Spraga. Um, so our speaker, Shabazz Khan, grew up in Pakistan. In 2009, he and his family fled to the United States due to political upheaval. In 2012, Shabazz began his degree in mechanical engineering at BCC. In a very brief time, Shabazz has been involved in the Engineering Club, the International Club as both a member and president, the Debate Club, Students Helping Students, the Tutor Club, the guys everywhere. <laughs> He's served as a student ambassador, a student mentor, and both uh, a tutor in the task and step up to college. And he just learned very recently that he is one of two BCC students to win the uh, New England Transfer Scholarship. So another nice honor. <laughs> Uh, Shabazz will graduate this May and will transfer to UMass Dartmouth to pursue his bachelor's and master's in mechanical engineering despite my attempts to switch him over to humanities. He seems convinced that he wants to be an engineer. So please welcome Shabazz Khan. Thank you. Let me have a sip of water. Thank you so much, Ms. Damasio. 
I would like to thank all of you for taking, you know, your time out of your busy schedule and coming here today to listen to what I have to say. I would like to thank the president of BCC, Jack Sprager, for coming out. A special thanks to Professor DiMazio, who have met me infinity times. Where did she go? Infinity times to help me out uh, present this project today. I would like to thank the communication department, Kevin Spil Spiller, as well as the technology services here at BCC. As Damasio said, we will be doing the question and answer um, session for the last 30 minutes of this presentation. So please feel free to write uh, any questions that comes to your mind and you guys can ask me at the end of this presentation. The reason I chose this project was to make awareness within our BCC and our own society outside of BCC, our community, is to teach you a little bit about Islamophobia and how it's affecting the American, the ordinary American Muslim population. Today I'm not going to be talking about how peaceful the religion of Islam is, nor I would be talking about how violent it is. What I have to say is that Islam is a religion, like Christianity and Judaism, that is intended to bring you closer to God. And sadly, we have seen people, many people, and individuals using a religion to wage war and violence within the past and present. Islam was founded by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in the uh, 7th century. Right now, there's about 1.57 billion Muslims around the world, and it's one of the second largest religion, you know, globally. Uh, the two main uh, holiest city in Islam is Mecca and Medina, which you can see on the map. And the only reason I'm showing those city, two city is I'll be talking about them in the next PowerPoint slides. They're about four hours drive apart from each other, and they're the two holiest, they're known to be the two holiest cities in Islam. Islam provides guidelines to just society, proper human conduct, and equitable economic system. So what we, at least I believe, that Islam isn't just religion, it's a way of life to a Muslim person. is I was talking about the two cities, Mecca and Medina, when uh, Prophet Muhammad um, was, you know, given, uh, was, you know, he was revealed uh, quotes from God, and he was told that he's the prophet. So when he told that to his people, many people didn't believe him in the beginning, uh, especially his own community, the community of Quraysh. They did not believe what he had to uh, what he had to say. Most people thought he was just making those stories up. So what he had to do is he was forced to leave his homeland Mecca, and he was forced to go to Medina, which is those cities I mentioned uh, in the previous slide. Him and his companion went to Medina and he was welcomed as a leader in the city of Medina. When he was welcomed, Makkan saw that as a threat to their own city. And just to, that's a side note, Makkan, uh, the majority of people in Makkan were the Quraysh, which was the Prophet Muhammad's family itself. They decided to send army to Medina to defeat Prophet Muhammad and his companion. And when the army came to Medina, that was the first war in the Islamic religion. It was known as the uh, War of Al-Badr. It was a very, I would say it was a very um, 
bad uh, time for Prophet Muhammad and his, his companion, just because they lost about 70 lives and they still won. It was the first battle in Islamic history. Today I'll be talking about talking about Islamophobia and how it's been affecting the uh, Amer ordinary American Muslims' lives. Uh, as we can see, the uh, poster on the front slide is Islamophobia with question mark. And these posters have been funded by the AFDI organization, which is the American Def Freedom Defense Initiative organizations. To me, it's very offensive because I don't even believe they should put the word American with their organization name because that's not the America I know. So I say they should, you know, it's a good idea for them to change the name to something else. Uh, they have been quoting um, a lot of po their posters. They've been getting all the quotes from the uh, Muslim holy book, Quran. Quote, when you meet the unbelievers, strike their neck, dot, dot, dot. Now, from the bottom of my heart, I do believe this is a quote from uh, the holy book, the Muslim holy book, Quran. But what they have been doing is, I believe, hijacking the, some of the American minds. Because this is a Quran, this is a quote from the holy book based on the time. In the event I talked about, the wall, uh, the first wall in Islam, Al Badr, and how uh, Muhammad Almi was attacked in the city of Medina, this is when this court was revealed. The only reason this court was revealed was when Meccan attacked Muhammad, God revealed the court by saying that if they come to fight you, you fight back. That's the reason uh, this court was revealed. But we don't see that here in this uh, ad. It, it is asking you a question on uh, of it, if it is Islamophobic to oppose these beheadings. I say that it's inhumane to see these beheadings that's happening in this world. So it's I don't I don't see the reason for this Islamophobic to be there because it's inhumane. No matter who you are, it's just. Uh, we, we shouldn't, uh, th this shouldn't happen. We all should oppose the beheading. So I like how uh, Pamela Gerald, who is the president of uh, this organization, the American Freedom in, uh, Defense Initiative, she has been amazing at spreading anti-hatred Islamic comments, Islamic ads in the major cities of US, such as New York City, Washington DC, and Los Angeles. So going back to the term Islamophobia, it's a fear, hatred against Muslim population living anywhere on this earth. Uh, we can see Islamophobia in Pakistan. We can see Islamophobia in Saudi Arabia. Is we can see Islamophobia in the US. It's a stereotypical. It creates uh, discrimination within society. I believe Islamophobia divides us as people. I believe Islamophobia shouldn't exist. Nothing uh, that promotes hate and violence should exist in society. That's what I believe. There's a lot of anti-Muslims um, groups slash individuals in uh, our American society. And those uh, groups includes the AFDI, who's the president of the AFDI group, is Pamela Geller. Uh, I've been ta I'm going to be talking about Terry Johns, who is the priest in uh, Florida, who did the Burn the Quran Day on 9-11-2010. Sean Hannity, famous spokesperson from Fox News, Megan Teller, and uh, Brigitte Gabriel. They've been very famous at uh, spreading anti uh, um, Islamic, you know, comments on um, TV channels such as Fox News. That's the only source I see that's been uh, hijacking some of the American minds here and is trying to uh, spread hate and violence uh, within our society. The um, American Freedom Defense um, they have been quoted, Pamela have been quoted for saying, 
quote, Islam is the most anti-Semitic genocidal ideology in the world, which I don't find right because that, if that's not true. We all know that. She was also quote for saying, now listen to this, Hitler was, in, Hitler was inspired by Islam. So she had really, uh, she's really close-minded. She does not really think. I think she should, t uh, you know, take some uh, uh, classes on the uh, study of Islam to teach herself about Islam and to teach uh, what we did in history, you know. We have uh, been doing, uh, we did pretty good with mathematics back in the day. The word algebra came from the Middle East, you know, it's an Arabic term. The book Al-Jabal was written by uh, a mathematician, Al-Khwarizmi. And how many of you know that Al-Jabal was an Arabic term? A physicist and two Middle Eastern girls, of course, you know. <laughs> So, you know, my, my main goal is to teach you about what we did and who we really are uh, instead of what, y you know, we see on TV these days. I wish I had, you know, uh, a lifetime opportunity to meet this lady in my real life, to teach her some, you know, uh, things about Islam. She has been uh, doing an art competition on... Um, May 3rd, next month, 2015, in Galen, Texas. Uh, the winning uh, cartoonist will be awarded $10,000, and um, uh, another uh, People Choice Award will be given, which is usually chosen by uh, people through, uh, you know, uh, voting on her website, will be given $2,500. Those were some of the... Um, um, arts I've you know collected from her website so thank you so much for her website she has so many hateful things you know that I don't have to you know look and dig into I can just go on her website and find all of these offensive things um, the one of the picture is submit or die showing Prophet Muhammad and the only reason they're doing um, the art competition is because Muslim don't believe in pictures Muslim can take pictures if they want to, but Prophet Muhammad never believed in pictures. And the only reason behind the, you know, not believing in photos was he did not want his photo to be here so Muslim can worship him. He believed that Muslim should worship God. He's just a way, you know, to uh, teach them, you know, about the uh, Islamic religion. He's just a prophet. He's not God. So those pictures are just so offensive, and Palama doesn't realize how offensive these can be to 1.57 billion Muslims around the world. We believe in freedom of speech. We recently had, uh, we all know, you know, uh, everyone have the right to do uh, and to say whatever they want. This is what makes this country so special. But I believe that uh, she should also take 1.75 billion people, you know, and um, she should also think of them before she even takes these steps, you know. The bottom picture shows how there's a fish, you know, the evolution turns into monkey, human, then a Muslim guy holding gun in his hand, then a guy with beard and uh, the holy book in his hand, which is Quran, then a pig, just because Muslims don't eat pig, and then I don't have to say what's next, because I was confused what it was, but now I f know what it is. It's, I don't know. Can I say it? Okay, good. <laughs> because I didn't. I thought it was a hat. But Demazio is like, it's not a hat. It's an S-H-I-T. <laughs> so what, what they're showing is, you know, how these humans are evolving into becoming Muslims and then turning into? Thank you. So... I, I don't see, you know, any reason for this to be out there in society. This is just hurting us as Muslims. We find it very offensive. What if, uh, well, I mean, I've listened to Palama talking about, oh, you can fight freedom of speech, you know, with freedom of speech, which is true. But how would I <laughs> offend so many Christians out there by... Uh, doing something disrespectful 
to Jesus, you know, peace be upon him. I wouldn't do that. Not any Muslim would not have guts, you know, to go out there and uh, uh, offend so many Christians out there because we believe in Jesus. And that's her um, strong point. She knows Muslim would, would not do such a ridiculous thing uh, to uh, a religion of Christianity or Judaism because we, be, we go back to uh, Adam and Eve. And Muslims are not Muslim if they don't believe in Jesus. Muslims are not Muslims if they don't, they don't believe in Abraham. We have to believe in them first and then Prophet Muhammad. Yes. And thanks because the picture and the website because we we uh, attract the attention of non-Muslim to study the, the Islam mm -hmm. and become Islam. That means it's help to spread the Islam. Exactly. I mean um, that that's what I said. Thank to them because now today I'm here to teach you of what she's trying to teach you, you know, through media and her website. And today I'm here to teach you from my point of view, from my Islamic, you know, views of what this is. So this is like, as you said, this is like an opportunity for me to teach, you know, my uh, uh, society of what a real and true Islam is. So I, I would say that, um, Having a freedom of speech here in the United States, we have, uh, some of us, you know, have taken it too far. We, you know, tend to believe that uh, we can use freedom of speech, but we don't think that it can, like, hurt, wound, and offend so, offend so many people out there. I believe that Muslims are being... Uh, painted with the same push, you know, as terrorists, you know. We are not all... Uh, you know, Muslim are terrorists, you know. We see people um, that are terrorists, and the only reason, you know, that they are terrorists is beca because they're from the uh, uh, majority Muslim population, I would say. We have people that go to uh, shoot so many kids out there, you know, you know in the uh, schools. The Newton Connecticut tragedy that took place. So I can't just label all Christian for what an individual is doing just because he happened to be Christian. But what I see here in um, news is that all Muslims are being labeled for what an individual group or an individual uh, person, you know, is doing in society. Osama bin Laden wasn't Muslim. That's what we don't believe. His religion might have been a bad version of Islam or his version of Islam. It was not a version of Islam of 1.57 billion Muslims because Osama bin Laden does not represent Islam. Uh, t Pamela talks about the president of Iran, Ahmadinejad. He does not, he's not the leader of Islam. He might be the leader of Iran, but he does not represent the uh, Islamic population. Pamela um, is trying to, she is trying to, and she have been running these ads uh, in uh, major U.S. cities, such as New York, Los Angeles, and uh, Washington, D.C. Right now, like right now, these ads are being run in New York City. She recently won the uh, suits, lawsuit that was fi uh, filed against the uh, New York subways of $20 million just because she can use the first constitu constitution, freedom of speech, to run these ads. One of the ad reads, in any war between the civilized men and the savage, support the civilized men. So once again, this is comparing the civilized man, which is just an ordinary guy, versus the savage, which is the jihadi, a Muslim in another word, to what they think of. But jihadi isn't Muslim. It can either be Muslim or non-Muslim. What they define jihad is as to go and kill the non-believer. But that's not what jihad is. Thank you so much for Google and Wikipedia, because if you do Google the word jihad, 
its uh, it di its, dif its definition of jihad is an internal struggle. I do jihad every day to you know wake up in the morning, make breakfast, sometime you know to come to BCC and uh, deal with my you know uh, things I have to do every day. I jihad every day to. Uh, do my homework for my thermodynamics class, you know? So that's a way of jihad for me, you know? Uh, the father of this country have done so much jihad to build this country and give us the freedom of speech, religion, so we can live free. So the word jihad is just a struggle that you do in life instead of what I see mostly on Fox News is they describe it is to kill the infidels, you know. I would want to see, um, when they talk about Sharia law, I would want to see Sharia law in the holy book. I myself read my, uh, Quran, you know, a, a, a completed Quran at the age of nine, have not found a single, single you know, um, evidence of what Sharia law is in the Holy Book of Quran. So I would like to see how they have found Sharia law so easily then uh, all these scholars are still digging for Sharia law in the Holy Book of Islam. You know, all these Islamic scholars are still saying, what is Sharia law? We don't even know about Sharia law. And these are the people out there that are claiming to say that, you know, uh, Muslims are, you know, um, using Sharia law, and they're using uh, all these different uh, ways to make America Islamic. No, America isn't Islamic. America is a country where everyone is welcome, you know. But I guess they're too scared of um, Muslim population. That's why they have this Islamophobia idea to scare the American population and to let them know that we are dangerous. We are, in reality, we are not. We are just people, you know? We have two hands, one head, you know? Come on, you know? Most people are uh, so scared of Islam, but in reality, they shouldn't be because we are just normal human beings, you know? We have people who, you know, uh, we are the same people as you. We wake up in the morning to make breakfast, take kids to school, and worry about how to pay bills. We don't go and blow up ourselves is Pamela was quoted for saying that Muslims just go up and blow up themselves. There's 1.57 billion Muslims once again. If they were to blow up themselves, I don't think we would be sitting in this room right now. There's a couple of Muslims out there, so don't be scared. We are peaceful people. That's what I want to say. That's my main you know, point here. She was also running the other ad, which is on the bottom of the uh, slide, uh, talking about the Islamic Jewish hatred. I love how she talks about the Islamic Jewish hatred and the Muslim versus the Jews, the Muslim versus the Christian, uh, is because she is really good at it. Is Muslims people believe in Judaism, Muslim people believe in Christianity. Everything in the Old Testament and the New Testament is in the book of Quran. And she had been using the word Jew, Christian, you know, Judaism to defend her posters by putting uh, wrong quotes out there and to confuse, you know, our American population. And she says, Islamic Jewish, ha Jewish hatred, it's in the Quran, which is not, you know. I, I would say that Quran was written back in 7th century, which brings us back to 1400 years ago. It was written based on that time. When the court war, as I said, revealed to Prophet Muhammad, it was revealed on what was happening back then or in the situation that he was in. That's when the quotes were revealed. We don't use the, those quotes anymore. Islam, Islam isn't a religion, as I said before. It's a way of living. So it's just, the Quran is just a book to teach you how to live your life. Instead of us going back and searching, you know, out of 30 chapters, searching 20 quotes about hate and violence, why don't we talk about another 99 quotes that's in Quran about, you know, uh, peace and respect and diversity? Why don't we talk about those quotes? But, uh, you know, unfortunately, we have some people out there in society who just want, you know, I guess, wants to spread hate and, uh, and scare, you know, uh, their own people of how bad we are. 
Pamela was also um, quoted for saying that. Okay, uh, Southern Poetry Law Center, uh, they quoted Pamela for saying that Pamela Geller is an anti Muslim woman's most visible uh, figurehead. She is relentlessly shrills and curls in her broad brush den denunciation of Islam. So there's a lot of organizations out there who, um, you know, denounce what she talks about. She All she talks about is hate and um, anti-Islamic, you know, things that we don't want to see because that's not who we are. Uh, another person on the, uh, for this presentation that I'll be talking about is Jerry Johns. The only reason I put him in his quote is because I want to talk about them briefly. I'm not going to go into detail. He is the um, pastor in one of the local church in Florida. He was quoted for saying, not to sound mystical but we fall into it and we feel like this was a calling that god was giving us not only concerning islam but to wake up americans you know america and the only reason he said was he held a day of burning the quran day on uh, september 11 2010 which um was very shocking to muslim because why would you burn a holy book of 1.57 billion Muslims when you know they have nothing they did not do anything wrong to you you know 9-11 I was part of 9-11 every single Muslim that lived in the you know um, New York City as well as all these 1.57 billion Muslims were part of 9-11 we, be, we believe that um, we shouldn't be judged based on what this one individual group did. We were uh, part of, um, you know, we were gathered with all the Christian and we condemned these attacks again and again and again. But for some reason, some of these individuals don't realize that, you know, not all Muslims are bad. And they, you know, not to touch the topic 9-11, but n not Muslims are not responsible for that event, I would say. An individual group that I believe is hijacking Islam, Al-Qaeda, was responsible for 9-11. We have seen so much hatred and, uh, hatred and violence, you know, um, of towards Muslim population after 9-11. Islamophobia wasn't so uh, famous, you know, before 9-11. It became famous after 9-11, and it was building and building and building. Just to add in some statistic about what Muslim believe um, in all these suicide bombing, in Lebanon, in back in 2004, almost 75 Four percent of Lebanese believe that suicide bombing was justified. There was something wrong. But in 2008, six years from then, only 32 percent believed in that. In Pakistan, which is my country, which is where I came from, 33 percent Muslim believed that suicide bombing were justified. But as societies are transforming, advancing, only 5% of Muslim population in Pakistan believe that suicide bombing were justified. So see the difference within the six years from 33% to 5% of Pakistanis, you know, believe that suicide bombing were justified. And if we were to ask this question now, I'm pretty sure that the statistic may be down. And these people out there, such as Palama, Terry John, Seen Hannity, talks about how 99% of Muslim in Pakistan, you know, support terrorism. These statistics here, you know, shows me that no, only 5% back in 2009 believed that suicide bombing were justified. But now we are living in 2015. If we were to do, you know, surveys again, I'm pretty sure those numbers would, would change. Seen Hannity was quoted to say, quote, you know, you know, would you have allowed him to choose, you know, Hitler main cough? 
um, which is the Nazi Bible. In other words, where does this stop? Is there any limitation whatsoever? He was quoted to say that for Keith Ellison, who is the uh, congressman from, um, I believe, a state of Michigan? Keith Ellison, from one of the most populous, you know, um, uh, Muslim population city, Detroit, I believe. And he was quoted to say that when Keith had to sworn in on, you know, Quran, which he's Muslim, in 2006. So comparing Quran to Hitler's uh, main cough, that's just so offensive. Like, see, what's the limit of these people saying these things? I just see they have so much um, hate towards the Islamic uh, population in the U.S. See, once again, going back to uh, I may get a question from the audience saying, what about freedom of speech? I believe in freedom of speech, once again. But we all should know that freedom of speech isn't intended to hate, you know, this huge or uh, any, any minority or majority population living in this world. We shouldn't use an excuse of freedom of speech to offend so many people out there. What I'll be showing you is a couple of videos and um, talking about how the media, you know, I, as you can see, my focus is uh, to, uh, my point is to focus on media and these um, individual and groups that's uh, spreading some hate and, you know, uh, violent things in our society. So that's from the uh, CNN tonight. <laughs> So once again, it's a short video. I'm not going to show the whole thing just because we have limited time. She says it's a Quran, which in reality, I want to know what part of Quran tells you to hate the Jews, you know. Uh, I can say that some quotes were revealed back in the day when uh, Islam, were, you know, Muslims were in conflict with other religion, but it's not intended to, um, we are not intended to use those quotes in, you know, in 2015. Those were revealed for that time for specific so, reasons. Another video I'll be showing you is um, uh, about how she had been using those um, ads and she uh, argued with one of the um, Islamic scholars from the CARE, which is the CAIR, Council on American Islamic Relationship. That's the group in um, US that's been trying to promote the uh, other side of the picture, which is the peaceful side, uh, to represent the American uh, Muslim population in the United States. According to Kyle, CAIR, there are about 37 different groups in the United States that the purpose of those groups is to promote prejudice or hatred of Islam in American society. 37 of them that's out there who are to 
who are very active in spreading hate uh, in the um, hate towards the Islamic, you know, uh, religion. And there's about 32 groups that are hateful, but they don't say it out loud. So they're like supporting these other 37 groups, but um, they're still on like, you know, on the neutral side. Uh, there was a recent survey that was done by the Pew Research Center and which asked how many people know if Muslim condemn terrorism. Almost 37% people, you know, knew that somehow Muslim out there condemn terrorism. But 63% uh, people did not even know if Muslim in their life have ever condemned terrorism. Um, terrorism, which we do, but I believe it's not in the media. We don't show the positive picture of Islam in the media, which is the sad part, but there's nothing I can do. You know, if I ever become the president of Fox News, I can like flip the whole story, but I don't know if that's going to happen. But here's another video for you guys to see how Pamela have been using her strategy, strategies to um, uh, offense so many Muslims out there. Controversial ads with shocking messages are set to debut in San Francisco, like the one that says, quote, killing Jews is worship that draws us close to Allah. Just, just let that statement sink in for a moment. And, and then here's another one. Homosexuality is ugly. In Iran, we don't have oh homosexuals God. like in your country, with, of course, a picture of Iran's president, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad. The ads are being posted on buses around San Francisco. Ten of them have gone up. The woman who's behind them, Pamela Geller, and her group, American Freedom Defense Initiative. Pamela, thank you for uh, being here with us this morning. A lot of controversy about these ads. Uh, tell us why you want them up. What is the point? Well, these ads are a response to a deceptive and salacious ad campaign being run by the Muslim Brotherhood group CARE that says that jihad is getting to the gym every day. And so our ads were designed to uh, show the reality of jihad using actual quotes from high profile Muslims, the Prime Minister of Turkey, the fourth of jihadi, the Times Square bomber, uh, to increase awareness about the ideology that sanctions the violence and supremacism of jihad. You're being accused of this being just blatantly anti-Muslim though. Um, you know, what is your reaction to that? So what she's saying is that um, she's opposing the um, Kyle group, which I talked about, on how they're using different advertisement in the U.S. by saying jihad is getting up in the morning, making breakfast for their kids by taking them to school, all that, which I talked about before. This is what I believe my jihad is. She's saying that I'm opposing them and telling the truth of what a real jihad is by quoting the president of Iran, Osama bin Laden, the Times Square bomber. But once again, Osama bin Laden isn't the leader of Islam. The president of Iran is not the leader of Islam. He might be the leader of Iran, but he's not the leader of Islam. Islam does not have a leader. We tend to make decisions based on uh, our own choices. So if I make decisions based on what I think is right or wrong, my population shouldn't be judged. My family shouldn't be judged based on what the decision I made. So what she's saying clearly in this video is, Osama bin Laden, I guess what? It's Islam. You know, they've been saying it. But what we are saying, what the other 1.57 billion Muslims are saying, that Osama bin Laden doesn't even represent us. The president of Iran does not represent us. A person who does not believe in the Holocaust, they like, come on. We all believe that, you know, we know it, you know, Holocaust took place. Uh, we have evidence. But a person that denounces Holocaust, that doesn't believe in Holocaust, are we, are we going to be, uh, uh, are we going to be, accepting what Palma is giving us from the president of Iran, I believe this guy shouldn't even be on TV because he does not represent the uh, Islamic uh, religion. Well, it's deeply offensive to, to Muslims because they know... I'll be showing you um, how Linda have um, responded to her uh, advertisement. 
she's the uh, vice president of Care Corp. Uh, the American, uh, uh, you know. Who is a Holocaust denier. I mean, this is not a, this is not a, he's not an American Muslim. And Ms. Taylor has a history and track record of uh, vilifying the Muslim American community and pinning communities up to get, uh, against each other, including her most recent homophobic uh, ads, which are very uh, offensive not only to the Muslim American community, but also to the LGBT community here in the United States. This is not the first time that ads have gone up. You'll remember the controversy over similar ads in, in New York. Pamela, your organization successfully sued the New York City Transit Agency when it, it tried to ban so once again these are like things you can go on and on and talk about you know islamophobia for hours and hours but due to the uh, limited time i only have about 25 minutes and plus i promised to give you guys 30 minutes of question and answer so i'll be moving on faster kiel is the uh, council on american islamic relationship which was established in 1994 and once again it's like a, on, an organization that opposed the anti-islamic uh, ads or anti-Islamic groups within the U.S. Um, the bottom picture, Islamic Center of Boston, they recently, about two weeks ago, when we had a trial for the Boston Marathon, um, two brothers took place about a week ago. They hold a session for question and answer, get to know a Muslim in Boston still, stray, st still stay strong day to bring in all these, uh, you know, different fates of club to um, learn about Islam. I think that's one of the way we can succeed in teaching the American population. So the Islamic Center of Boston has been doing amazing to uh, teach the Bostonians of what the real Islam is after what we have seen, you know, that took place at, at the Boston um, Marathon tragedy. This is a short video. I would, you know what, I'll show it to you. It's a short video, believe me. <laughs> it's gonna be on how Muslim believe um, on what they see on TV uh, by how Palama is, you know, using all these ads and the hatred within the West. So this is gonna just show you a little bit of how Muslim people believe. So I've told you from my point of view, I believe it's totally wrong. You know, these people out there does not represent us, but let's listen to what they have to say. ...come from every country in the world and speak every language in the world. Only about 15% of Muslims are Arabs, and of course not all Arabs are Muslims. When we actually listen to the voices of the American Muslims, what we see is that often the reality goes against what has become the conventional wisdom of this country. This idea that they hate us because of who we are, which gained tremendous ascendancy in the immediate years after 9-11 and still holds sway in very large corners of the American populace, is a very dangerous one. Because what you see from things like the Gallup poll is that that's actually not true at all. So this poll provides a kind of an opportunity to take away all the nonsense that's been cluttering up the relationship, and then get to the cut to the real core, which is the political tensions uh, between these different societies. People here are hungry for knowledge, for improving their lives, for doing better things for their kids. There's so much for, you, for, for the West to share. But then yet, you cannot share through the barrel of, 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 of a tank. Bye. Hearing the voices of ordinary people, that we can engage the world based on facts, not fear. Thank you. So, I mean, as you saw in the video, people out there, people out there in the east side of the world, world is pretty upset. They see how the rest is showing you the image of Islam. They are um, very upset. They are complaining about how they have been viewed in the uh, you know Western uh, media. So I don't have to say anything because all you know, 
this video says a lot, you know. It's to me when I was watching it, I almost cried last night because this is telling us so much. What we have to do is just connect ourselves, connect those two worlds, you know, the east and the west, to learn the similarities within each other. I recently did a survey on uh, BCC campus, and what we found was almost twenty-two percent student uh, believe something negative or think of something negative when they hear the word Islam. They associate Islam with uh, a negative term or the, you know, based on what they believe in, based on what they see on TV. And I'm proud to say that almost 78% students at BCC believe that Islam is a religion of peace and uh, diversity, you know. It's a religion of piece that teaches us you know a way of life and the things I'll be showing you the words some students have used were just amazing and I still believe 78% is still not enough number we have long way to go but it's improving it's better than 66% or 50% which we see mostly in the west or the south so um, students who you know, gave some positive comments, used the words uh, misunderstood, uh, culture, faith, Muhammad, religion, peace, Quran. Those were the terms some students use to, uh, when they heard the word Islam in a very positive way. The negative words some students used were fear, different, extremist, ISIS, oppressed, racism, radical wall terrorist and terrorism. Those were the negative words some students use. Uh, we had wasted about 41 surveys just because it was incomplete. And this, uh, this number of students who took place in the survey were almost about 300, but we had to waste about 41 surveys because it, wasn't un it was uncompleted answers, so I couldn't put anything for that. And that's going to be all. So at the end, I would like to say that I hope this, you know, that in time, Muslims will not be defined to my fellow Americans, you know, by a handful of terrorists, you know, but by millions of others who are involved in all aspects of um, American life. Well-known American Muslim range from the like, TV personality Dr. Oz, U.S. Representative Keith Ellison, to an MBA star Sha Shaquille O'Lean, uh, to police officers, teachers, you know, housewives, firefighters, uh, cab drivers, deli workers, and to millions of uh, American Muslims in between. These people that I just mentioned are not terrorists. They are just an ordinary American Muslims. So I would like to end this project by uh, Aung San Suu Kyi quote. She said, quote, it takes one person to change the world. Closing the quote. So let's, let's let be that person and do what we can, you know, to change our society and transform them uh, to understand, you know, the image of Islam. So. Thank you so much for listening, and we will move on to the question and answer session. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. Mm -hmm. Why is they here? <laughs> For me. If the, I make bomb some, in some place, give me heaven. Why is they here in this hilarious life? Mm -hmm. It's easy way. So. Okay.
Well, you know, uh, what she's saying is that if Muslims were really to believe that uh, suicide was way to go to heaven, these 1.75 billion would have, you know, exploded themselves by now and went to heaven. Instead of that poor lady struggling, you know, making lunch for herself, you know, studying at BCC, this is a really, you know, uh, hard life, what she's saying. We are, you know, struggling. We have this way of jihad, you know, to make lunch at the day, go to BCC, finish our classes, and enjoy this beautiful summer. We can't wait to, you know, uh, finish this semester. So what, what she's saying, if it was easier for Muslims to go to heaven, you know, get this pass, you know, stamp on their passport to explore themselves, they would have. But they are not, because that's not what Islam is. That's not what we believe in. And that's not what the majority of 1.57 Muslims believe in. So, thank you. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. Yes, uh, peace be upon him. Uh, we are supposed to say peace be upon him when we say the word, uh, I mean, when we, you know, speak in the name of prophets. Uh, Muslims believe that Jesus, you know, was their prophet, where Christian believes he was the son of God. Uh, when we say the word Jesus, we have to say peace be upon him. When we say the word Moses, we have to say peace be upon him. Uh, of our women, you know, cannot say uh, prophets' names. They have to cover their head first to respect their name. So we have so much respect towards Jesus, Mary, uh, Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, uh, Abraham, uh, peace be upon him, Moses, peace be upon him. So we have to respect them, and that's a way of uh, showing some respect towards you know, all these prophets who have you know, been in the history. So, yeah. Any other questions? Yes. How is America negatively advertised based on the behavior of our extremists? Are we negatively represented in foreign policy? Uh, that, yeah, I mean, uh, when I showed you how Muslim felt, you know, uh, towards the West and towards the um, Western foreign policy, if you were to, you know, saw the video, she said that it's painful, you know. She, in other words, it's what these Pamela, you know, the AFDI group is doing does not represent uh, Christianity, does not represent Americans, you know, first of all. But what the East is seeing is the other side of the picture. This one person is making all of us, all of the Americans, look bad on the East side of the media, you know, in the Middle East. So we as Americans look bad based on these individual acts. We shouldn't. The point is we shouldn't look bad because it's just this one guy from Florida and this one organization that's been trying to uh, spread anti-Islamic, you know, uh, um, speeches, you know, throughout the United States. So that does make us look bad, which I believe it shouldn't, but it does, based on what they do. We are saying for Muslims, Osama bin Laden represent Islam. They believe in they believe in that. It makes all the Muslims look bad towards what you think of us. You think of Osama bin Laden, you know. Some people, I would say, you know, think of Osama bin Laden as the majority of Muslims. You know, Osama bin Laden is the same thing as the majority of Muslims. That's the whole concept. To middle, you know, to all Muslims out there, uh, what Pamela and Terry John is doing. Uh, make us think that all Americans might be the same, which it shouldn't, but that's the whole concept and that needs to change. So. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Any other questions? I just want to make a quick comment. Even though the results of the survey were actually very good compared to other places, I used to live in the Midwest and some of my friends back in middle school, they would cry at least once a week just because of the racism that they had to deal with every day. So even though not always like that. That being said, I have traveled to other countries and it's the same with the United States. Not all countries like the United States and that is the fact. So. Mm -hmm. I don't know if my sister would like me to say this, but 
She, I mean, when she was in high school, she faced a lot of racism, you know, in the U.S. Uh, she was a good, not to say she isn't anymore, but she was a good Muslim, you know. She is still, but she had this identity, Hetska. Do you guys know she had to give up headscarf? She had to give up headscarf because of some people out there? She doesn't wear headscarf anymore. She gave up her identity just because of a couple of individuals. People did not want to work with her in biology lab just because she happened to me to be Muslim. So what we have to do is teach our kids that not all Muslims are bad. She looked, she looks, she still looks beautiful. I love her, but she looked, she looked, I mean, I, when I see someone in headscarf, they just look so beautiful. And I think, she looked like an angel. She still is, you know, the little angel, but, uh, I, I loved seeing her in headscarf, but I don't get to see that anymore. My father doesn't get to see that. My mother doesn't get to see her in the headscarf. Just because of uh, the decisions she made based on what she faced in you know, uh, high school. And it was her decision to give up. And I'm happy she made that choice because now she's moving on. And you know, she's trying to find a way to succeed in life. So I'm happy for her, yeah. Um, is there any questions from? Um, um, yes. Um, how do uh, other uh, Muslims uh, feel about um, the Islamic State uh, Catholic? You know, oh, ISIS? Yeah. Or, uh, who, uh, like yes. Um, I mean, see, that's the thing we don't see in Western media. Uh, it's Pakistani scholar Tahir al Qadri. He have issued 14 hundred pages of fatwa. What well, fatwa is a statement, an Islamic statement, uh, condemning these groups and condemning these attacks. What ISIS is doing is persecuting Christians, persecuting part of uh, Muslim population, which is Shia, and some part of Sunni that defend Shia. So ISIS is doing acts that, that are just out of our mind, you know? We condemn these clubs. We don't even believe in ISIS. ISIS recently um, destroyed Islamic holy sites. Now tell me, if you were to go and destroy Islamic, destroy Islamic holy site, how, is, how much Islamic are you? They are not Islamic. We don't believe they shouldn't, but they are not Islamic. If one can kill so many Christians out there, if they can kill some Sunni and Shia out there, if they can destroy the most important um, places in Islam, all these sites in Islam, if they can destroy one of the oldest library, how Islamic can they be? Islam teach you knowledge back in the day um, China used to be one of the further country 1400 years ago and Muhammad said Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said if it were to if knowledge were to take you to China go for it that's how much they uh, promoted uh, education they loved education and not to forget the leader of the house in Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him was his wife so Woman is supposed to be the leader of the house. She gets to take care of all the money, just a side note, you know? So <laughs> that, that's a positive thing. But we value education so much, but unfortunately we don't see that in you know, today's media. That's not how we are looked upon. We are looked upon all the n negative things based on which, what each individual is doing, so yeah. Yes. She killed a cat, see? She killed a cat. The cat to kill, uh, uh, had her to go to the hair. Just the cat. There's another saying, yeah, there's. There's another story that uh, it's in the Islamic book is uh, when um, 
a person, you know, when you go to the wall, there used to be a guy that gets to ask you a question, why do you want to go to the wall? And this guy came in, and one of the Muhammad Prophet, peace be upon him, came in and asked him, why are you here today? He's like, my mom is going to die soon, you know, she's sick, so I think I would want to go in the wall with you guys to defend my Islam and go to heaven. You know, it's a way of jihad. He was sent home. Because Prophet Muhammad Kimpinian told him, your biggest jihad is to go home and take care of your mother, not to go and fight the war. Let us do that. But your biggest jihad is to go home and take care of your mother. This is what jihad is. It's a struggle, you know, to succeed what you want to succeed economically, socially, anything. So that's, that was his biggest jihad. We have many stories that are not used, you know, in the media or, uh, you know, uh, in everyday life to set, ex you know, Islam as an example, but we rather use all these events, you know, that are caused by individual to, um, you know, show what real Islam is, where in reality it's not, so. Any questions from Albo or, no? Okay. Any questions here? Yes. It's like the in the Old Testament, me and Damasio talked about it was be you know, behave like obey your husband. Now, did God want to obey your husband? He wanted you to obey your husband? No. He may have, you know, there may have been a situation where you weren't right and God said, oh, obey your husband. That was a code that was revealed. That doesn't mean you should listen to your husband no matter who he is, no matter what he says. No. You know, you have the... Uh, decision to make you have the right to make your own decision so there's a lot of things that you can go back to the old testament and the new testament to just cherry pick these quotes but no because those quotes were written in back in that time based on you know particular situations but unfortunately we you know we have been dealing with this but hopefully that will change and i hope that changes and is you know looking at the surveys that we have done mostly no offense but all the older people tend to think more uh, extreme as you know toward islam versus the newer generation <laughs> the newer generation tends to think more positive towards Islam because of technology. They can go and, you know, de do their own research. They can read books versus what some of the old folks, you know, gave me uh, some, you know, answers. <laughs> no, you're like part of the new generation. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So that's it. No questions. Oh, OK. <laughs> Sorry, next time. Thank you. Thank you.